This is how God speaks to a person. There are many facets. The Bible says he speaks to visions and dreams, prophecy, the word of God. We understand those things. But what is it when Paul said, I perceive that this voyage is not going to go well and there'll be much hurt, there'll be much damage. What is it where he says, I perceive? He doesn't say the Lord told me. He simply says, I perceived. There's a perception you have in your spirit, man, which God has given to you, which is similar to what we call in the Old Testament, the Urim and the Theorem. And there were certain practical requirements to the Urim and the Theorem. For example, when Joshua used it to find, uh, maybe you can help me, to find Achan, was it right? Yes. Was it Achan? Achan who was held from Jacob, yeah. Yes. And yeah. Joshua went to find the cursed objects. Yes. Who has the cursed objects? But he had to be close yes. to Achan, family and tribe. Why could God not give him the name before he had to go search through all these massive groups? Because he had to be right in the situation, close up, for the Urim and the Theorem to speak. And how the Urim and Theorem speak and the light would bounce off the effort is all another thing. I'm not going to get into that tonight. Because that's going to sound like witchcraft to many. But that is how the Urim and Theorem, the effort worked. But he had to get close to the situation. So God would put, now we no longer have the Urim and Theorem. We have what we call the inner witness, which is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the inner witness speaks to you by sensations, first of all inner sensations and a lot of people want to follow God with the extraordinary or spectacular spectacular and not with the inner witness and they make mistakes so people want to follow God on dreams on prophecy on visions instead of the inner witness that guides them this is the secret to hearing God's voice now I'm going to explain to you tonight how to physically feel these sensations that is what we get into with prophetic teaching okay so I spoke about the nine kingdoms and all these things just to explain to you how we do with angelology, angelology and how the fallen angels slept not only with the daughters of men, but even with the beasts, even possibly with the plant kingdom. We see a lot of defilement that has come in. That is why every beast had to be destroyed and cursed. So the Yerim Theum now becomes a the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, which is the inner witness to guide us. So the inner witness is there to guide you the spectacular is never there for guidance fully. We must not be led by prophecy. We must not be led by visions. We must not be led by dreams. The Bible says, those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Okay? Okay. We are not led by prophecy. I've seen so many people get into danger with prophecy. When I lead somebody by prophecy, and if they ask me if they must make a life decision, I will usually say, listen, 90% uh, of the time it is not. Unless if I tell somebody, I emphatically know God said this, but it would come as a trance, as an open vision to me, as a prophet, and I'll be so convinced in that area. But it is the extreme it's the exception, not the rule. So the Urim theorem now became the inner witness. It became a sensation to you. So when God speaks to you, he gives you a picture many times, he gives you an image, but even before he gives you an image, he comes and speaks to you about a feeling and a sensation that it requires you as a believer to take that sensation or feeling you get and now interpret it to the linguistic. So God would speak in a tone, in a frequency, in a sensation, in a feeling. It would require you as a believer to interpret it and now put it into a language and say, God said, one, two, three. And many people don't understand that the simplicity of God's voice is locked up in a feeling. The simplicity of God's voice is locked up in warmth. You know, when I minister prophetically to people or I do prophetic teachings and we really get deep into it, we get into some controversial things, but we get into the truth. You will feel a warmth in your spirit, man, in your solar plexus, in the matrix of your spiritual womb, under your diaphragm. You'll feel like a warmth beginning to heat up. Or if I prophesy over you one-on-one -on -one like this or online, or I point out a situation, I prophesy to you, you will feel a heat. The heat is usually confirmation of God's instruction of God's peace of God's word and God's will to you 
But that is the warmth. The Bible says uh, the disciples on the road of Ammonias did not say uh, how our hearts burned with us when he opened up the word to us. Mm. So a lot of people get out of the will of God because they no longer follow the inner witness. They try to follow prophecy. They try to follow visions. They try to follow dreams. And I'm all for that. I'm a prophet. But how many times have I had people coming to me and saying, prophet, you told me this and that happened and now I lost everything. You see, prophets prophesy, but we cannot be held responsible for how people receive the prophecy and how people war with the prophecy and how they must act on a prophecy. We are not responsible for that. Yes, we're responsible to teach the body of Christ, but uh, you know that has to happen as a whole. But we are responsible to release a word. So when people have a lack of training in the prophetic, they mess up their lives. So when God speaks, God speaks in a tonality, in a frequency, not so much in a linguistic. So God judges people on the tone, not the linguistic. I'm going to say it again. God judges the people on the tone, not only the linguistic really. For example, let's not be religious on here. How many of you have... Uh, been with an unbeliever and you hear them swear but you don't feel God being upset with them you might be upset and grieved because you don't like swearing language but God isn't upset with them they don't know better their hearts are darkened their mind is darkened and you see when we begin to judge like that we become religious but and then you would sit around a believer and they would say hello to you or thank you but they would say it with such a tone that you feel grieved Because God judges the tone, not the linguistic. Samuel said, when he was choosing King David to anoint King David with the brothers, the Lord said to him, I do not look upon the outside, for I, I'm, not like, I, 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 I'm not like man, I look upon the heart. I look upon the heart. The tone comes out of a person's heart. The linguistic comes out of their mind. The tone comes out of their heart. The linguistic comes out of their mind. The frequency comes out of their spirit. So people can say a nice thing with a bad tone. It means their heart is bad. And how many times? That is why prophets cannot read minds, but prophet can read hearts hearts you have three brains i wanted to start off this broadcast with by saying you have three brains you have your brain here which is your which works on your um prefrontal cortex which is more your ability to analyze am i right to just to logically work out concepts that is your first brain your second brain is The heart. They have just discovered on a on a on a on a study that the heart has neurotransmitters. They call it microneurons, and it has like a couple of million. Meaning, the microneurons in your heart. They studied. They found it out in 2018. Has the ability to think. So your heart has the ability to think. But the Bible could have told them this all along because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not as a man thinketh in his mind, but as a man thinketh in his heart. So God judges the thinking that comes out of the heart. Not out of the mind. Imagination is in the heart. Logical thinking is in the mind. So you have three brains. I'm touching on the first one as a brain here. The second one is your heart. It has the ability to think. When people dream, when they imagine in the spiritual, it is the heart. The third brain is what I call, is what they would call in, in medicine and so on. They would say it is your gut. Obviously, they would say the second brain because they don't know of the heart. But that's in terms of how God's voice speaks. His voice drops. The word comes first into your mind. 
You read it in your mind. And as you read it more and more, guess what? Now it becomes from Logos to Rhema. The moment it becomes Rhema, it settles into your heart. Once the word settles into your heart, it becomes a part of who you are. Now you begin to imagine just a word over and over and over and over. Now you preach out of the heart. You see, when I'm preaching here, I'm not speaking. I'm, I'm speaking out of my heart, but actually I'm speaking out of my solar plexus, which is below my heart, uh, which is your third brain. It is your gut. So even they have discovered medically that your gut has neurons. Your gut has neurons, which means now your gut has the ability to think. That is why they say that is your, in, in, in medical terms, they would call the gut your second brain. But in spiritual terms, it's the third brain. So the voice of God comes in the mind, the flesh. It drops to the heart, the soul. It then drops into your gut, your solar plexus, the di the di underneath your, I think I said diagram, I don't mean diagram, underneath your diaphragm. It is like in between your gut and your diaphragm, there is a spiritual womb. It is where the Urim and Theorem was kept. It is where the Holy Spirit will flow out of your belly like rivers of living water. It is the place where the Bible says the disciples on the road of Emmanuel that their hearts are burned within them. It is a fire that comes in here. Now, New Ages would take it to the chakras, which is a whole other thing that I'm not going to get into. It's got nothing to do with Christianity. But what is very strange is that even there with the chakras, they'll speak of a heat that comes in that place. It is because everything, whether it's New Age, whether it's Satanism, everything was taken and perverted from Christianity. Nothing exists. You know, somebody was asking me something. They said, is money evil? Or somebody asked me if sage was evil. I shouldn't be talking about that. People want to make things evil when the earth is neutral. It is the worship behind it. It is the intent behind it. It is the intent behind it. I can worship this eye drops here. I can put some, I can make it and say when I put it down my eyes, my eyes are now going to begin to see and I can begin to put power into it, put a spirit behind it. I can use it and make this my source and not God my source. So somebody asked me, is money evil? Money is not evil. Nothing on the earth is evil. People ask me if crystals are evil. How can crystals be evil if it's in the effort? It's used in the effort. It is the worship behind it and making that the source of healing. I have crystals for healing. I have crystals. Making that now the source and taking the source of Jesus Christ. Taking it out of Christ. What is New Age? New Age is simply still using spiritual principles, but especially how we as Christians believe it, but they're taking Christ out of the picture. The Bible says in Colossians, I believe it's either Colossians 2 or 3, where it says that Christ is everything. Even God is in Christ, meaning we don't serve a God outside of Christ. I want you to understand this because a lot of celebrities would say, I love God. What God are you talking about? The God I love, even God, is in Christ. 1 Corinthians, Colossians, Colossians something. Even God is in Christ. Just check it, it's Colossians 2 or 3. No, it's not Corinthians, it's Colossians. I'm always right. <laughs> Speaking about, is message therapy, is massage therapy? Okay, guys, I'm not here to, to answer all those things um, because I'm here to preach and we're going to, we will open up for some questions and answers. And um, it's a good question that you have. Um, I had an experience that I'll explain to you that I believe is a, is a thing where people fall into that is very bad. I had an experience with somebody that massaged or, or a med that tried to do a medical thing and they went to some funny things and we left. Um, uh, but uh, um, it's in Colossians, where God is in Christ. Colossians 3, where God is in Christ. So, I, so when people say, I love God, I love, no, 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 no. The boundaries must be Christ. The boundaries must be Christ. 
The boundaries must be Christ. So you see the complexity to when it comes to God's voice now. The complex, so oh, let, let's get, before I get to that, the money, is money, no, it's neutral. Silver is neutral. Gold is neutral. Gold can be evil by building a statue and worshiping it like a cow, like they did in, uh, in um, like the Israelites did with, uh, with Aaron and so on. Or it can be used in the Ark of the Covenant. So the object per se is not evil, except don't have a pentagram right now. I mean, obviously, that, that, that's without question something that represents witchcraft. I'm speaking of things, minerals. I'm speaking of it's not evil unless I change it, because otherwise I can say salt is bad. So money is not evil. The love of money is evil. Even when people say, I love money, it's not evil. Because I can say, man, I love this iPhone. It's so great. Yeah. Don't you just love the new iPhones? How many of you say that? But, you know. Uh, so, so people get very religious with this stuff. And uh, in South Africa, we have a disease of poverty. A disease of poverty. And a disease. Could you comment on yoga when it's not used for meditation, but only stretching the positions or the positions? So... With yoga, it's also a bit different, guys, because there's obviously some positions that is actually in the position of worshipping other gods. So when you would look at the formations of yoga, there's a big difference between stretching, normal stretching, and actually doing the stretchings of yoga. Because the positions of yoga, the concept comes out of New Ageism. Well, what is it? What is it? I'm not even sure. Buddhism, New Ageism. But it's the... the, um, the positions would be in worshipping of gods and I haven't really gone so much deep into those things it is just uh, you know that is the trap that I think a lot of people we're going to be dealing with a new age um, struggle where people are going to allow certain things that's why we must understand the truth of God's word Christ, 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 Christ we're going to have a huge problem with the different um, genders, if I can say it like that, without uh, being yeah. censored. Um, I don't know, know what another word to say, but uh, uh, whether I have a female pen or a male pen or, you know, um, if I, let me open my take my opinion but we're going to have a problem with that and the church right now because people are going to use the scripture in the book of genesis where it is saying that god made he him he made him and her give me that scripture quickly it's genesis chapter number two somewhere and they're going to i think they're already using that where they're going to use that to say we justify now all these silly things. And then how does the church accept people that are in this type of relationships? How does the church accept it? Do we put people out or not? We are in that struggle right now because how do you still, how do you still? Yeah, Genesis, 1 Genesis 1 verse 27, what does it say? So God created man in his own image. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female. Male and female created he, he created he, them. So they are going to run a mock on that, on that verse. Yeah. And um, so, you know, you need to know the truth because deception is the name of the game towards the end time. I'm going to say it again. Deception is the name of the game towards the end time. So hearing God's voice, I'm going to share a certain level on a public platform. Deeper, I can only do with my partners on the Mighty Networks um, platform. And, uh, you know, hearing secrets to hearing God's voice. I already shared with you so many secrets, but I want to get into the sensations, five sensations. And please, I'm not going to be preaching, screaming. I'm here to teach you prophetic 
secrets. Secrets to hearing the voice of God. Secrets to how you can practice to hearing the voice of God. And remember, anything that you hear outside of the Bible and the Word, always take it to the Word. There, and this is, and because I'm not covering all aspects. People mustn't take me out of context to think I approve of certain things. For example, if I don't tell and explain the boundaries of revelation that comes to you and the voice of God comes to you, what are those boundaries? Uh, you take it to your leaders. You look into the word. You know, does it, is it in the word? Then take it to your leadership because they are the ones who are watching over your soul. Then take it to a council of a wise council, uh, a council of wisdom, of wise that is around you. It is, there are certain principles that you must always weigh up. And I'm not even speaking of revelation when it comes to doctrine. I'm just speaking of God's voice to you. When it comes to revelation as doctrine, there's a whole nother approval um, requirements that is required. For example, it needs to line up with with, post, with scripture. It then needs to line up with um, with historical or if it's a new, let's say if it's a new revelation, it doesn't have to be lined up with historical movements. It has to line up with scripture. Then it has to line up with somebody experiencing it another place. Another other apostles has to shake an agreement. It's so a whole process. We have taught on it. We saw Peter um, and Paul going through these um, uh, going through these protocols when they received new revelation. But new revelation is only for apostles and prophets and they have a protocol on how to receive that and then how to make it common for the body of Christ. Okay. So a lot of times people can just hear me out of context and then they think I approve of certain things. I don't. So, uh, um, so deception is the name of the game. Let's get into this even a little bit deeper. So I spoke to you just some basics on the voice of God, the first brain, the second brain, the third brain. How the voice comes into your, into your brain as logos. You read it in an analytical way, logical way. It gets, becomes a rhema to you. It now drops into your heart. Once you begin to really get into it in your heart, it drops into your solar plexus, into your, into your gut, into your diaphragm, underneath your diaphragm. It is now the voice of God speaking to you in your belly. It comes out of that and it is there where the voice of God can come out of you and touch somebody. Why? Jesus says, out of your belly flows forth verbs of living water. So that is why many theologians are not getting it right to touch the hearts of people because they are speaking out of their minds where we should be speaking out of our belly. Rivers of living water comes out of our belly. So the voice, voices, if you have seven kingdoms, you got the atomic kingdom, you got the microbiotic kingdom, you have the mineral kingdom, you've got the plant kingdom, you've got the animal kingdom, you've got the human kingdom, you've got the planetary kingdoms. Do you know each of them have voices? The Bible says that Jesus answered the tree and cursed it. He when he cursed the fig tree, he answered the tree. What does it mean when he answered the tree? It means the tree first spoke to him. What did the tree speak to him? The, tr the tree screamed out to him, the law, because that tree came right from the garden of Eden. There were three trees in the garden of Eden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life, and the fig tree in the garden of Eden. What did the fig tree do? To cover them up and bring the law into Adam and Eve. To cover up their righteousness. Adam and Eve was first clothed in righteousness. Then they fell. They became naked and their righteousness left them. Then they clothed themselves with the law by the voice of the fig tree. And when Jesus walked past the fig tree, the Bible says he answered the fig tree by cursing it. So the fig tree was speaking to Jesus. And the fig tree speaks to people today, saying to them continually, put on the law, live under the law. And Jesus cursed that voice. But it tells you a tree had a voice. Where does the serpent have a voice to speak? The donkey having a voice. That's just the plant kingdom. So I spoke to the plant kingdom, so the animal kingdom. Let's get to the planetary kingdom. The Bible says that the sun and the moon... Sorry, yeah, the sun and the moon spoke to Joshua. Now you see, when I say the Bible says, we're going to have some heretic hunters, theologians saying, the Bible never says it. Uh-huh. Because 
you are reading the Bible from here. When Joshua said, be still to the sun, the Hebrew word is not still, but it means be silent and shut up. Meaning a voice came out of the sun to Joshua. When Jesus spoke to the storms, the storm, the waves and the winds, he said, be still. It doesn't mean still. It means be silent and shut up. Because there was a voice coming out of the ocean because the sea is the kingdom of the enemy. It's the domain of evil. That is why there'll be no sea in heaven. That is why the storm came out of the sea. That is why the pigs went into the sea. That is why the madman of Gadara was at the sea. That is why there's mermaids. That's why there's a lot of water spirits around the ocean. That is why Jesus had to walk on the sea to show his dominion. That is why Moses had to split the sea to show the power of God. It's the domain of the enemy. So we see this voice is coming. So if there's a voice in the sun and the moon. And now what is a voice? Because I said to you, a voice is not just a linguistic or language that has a tone and a frequency. Do you know planets has frequencies that it releases? I mean, it's being recorded. It has a tone and a frequency. That is why God's word is a tone and a frequency. That is how creation was created. So when we see how man was created, it started with a tone. So if plant, plant kingdom has a tone, has a voice, if the animal kingdom has a voice, if man kingdom has a voice, planetary kingdom has a voice, do you think the mineral kingdom has a voice? If the mineral kingdom has a voice, that means money speaks. That means if something has a voice, it has the ability to hear. Because people who are mute cannot speak if they cannot hear. Am I right? That's why fully deaf people battle to speak. So if we now say that these things have voices, it means they have ears. So if money has a voice, it also means money has ears. That's why the Bible says, do not speak against the rich, because a little bird will hear you and carry your words. <laughs> and please, what I'm speaking of is no new age. Jesus knew the tree had ears to hear him. So it's a different level of consciousness when it comes to the different kingdoms, okay? And if you look at the planetary kingdom and planets and actually what planets are, do you know planets are actually sons of God? But let's leave that one for all another time. That is why he put in the lesser light to rule the night and the greater light to rule the day. They were in charge as sons of God. That is why drilling on Mars is not a great idea. Because just drilling on Mars is going to open up a portal that you don't even want to get into. Does this make sense to some of you? Let me know. We're going to get into the voice of God. We're going to touch on the first scripture right now. Acts 27 verse 10. But let me see your comments. Let me see if you guys are enjoying it. If it's speaking to you at least. Let me see your comments. So this is like 5% of what I will give my partners. Excellent. Love it. Love it. So we have about a thousand, just over a thousand people on. Numbers are low because... I think we are censored, plus we haven't been on for very long. People are saying, awesome, deep, 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 deep. If you think I'm false, let me know, man. You're entitled to your own opinion. Your Facebook's always low. Always, always, always. Even though I got half a million people on Facebook, it's always low. Making sense, love this so much. It definitely makes sense. Uh, great, great teaching 
Um, I just love your content. Awesome. And I want to make sure also that you don't only get information, but you get revelation and importation. So let me know about that as well. You get revelation and importation. Even though I'm just talking to you gently, even though I'm just talking to you uh, because I'm speaking revelation, I'm teaching, I'm not here to preach. When I get to preaching points, I'll preach and I'll lift it. But I want it to sink in deep. A lot of people saying nobody teaches this and powerful two years ago I would have thought you were cooked but spot on how do we partner <laughs> somebody will answer you by me on, on YouTube on how to partner um, if you want to partner you can just click on you can just uh, click on the links that will most probably be somewhere or there you can look at the um, you can go to leonopro.com and you can partner there. But uh, this is not to make money. Our partners is there to advance the kingdom, not for us to only give them hidden knowledge or esoterical knowledge. When I say esoterical, guys, what does esoteric mean? It simply means exclusive, okay? Uh, so hidden, it's not for that. It is just that I like to bless our partners because they are the ones that goes beyond just tithing an offering and a seed. They're the ones who goes beyond that. And the reason they're doing it is not to get resources back. Otherwise, it's just a transaction and there's no blessing. The reason for them to do it is to become part of the prophets and receive the prophet's reward. And for the prophetic ministry that we have here to go beyond its borders to reach the world. And uh, there's a lot of things. So our partners goes towards our building projects, our broadcasting, our all global vision it goes towards all those things. Let me see. Let me see what what people, what the comments are saying. Let me see what the comments are saying. Um, definitely revelation importation. So powerful. That is actually I'm looking for importation. Amen. Love to hear from so deep. I'm understanding receiving. We're going to get back into the teaching right now. Actually, I haven't started the teaching. I just went by my spirit right now. What I felt. But I'll do the teaching quick. It won't be too long. Amen. You're so very right. I receive love your teachings. Amen. Amen. Recording and saving this. I grew up on these. Te- grew up in these teachings. Awesome. Where did you grow up? It's a good place. Sinks in deeps and lingers. How do you start to recognize the Lord's voice? We're going to get into that right now. Becoming a partner is quick, okay? Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Touch a partner has been an amazing blessing for me. I will become a partner, amen. Thank you so much. Give an example of belly talk. We're going to get into that, guys. Oh, belly talk. Out of your spirit. What is your belly? It is the womb of your spirit. So you have preachers who can preach out of their mind or you have preachers that can preach out of their belly. And usually when they touch the realm of their belly, glory comes out. So those who flow in the realm of glory knows how to preach out of their belly. Going to partner soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. And guys, if you make the decision to partner, make it a serious one, long-term one. I need to go back to work, but I can't, can't. I'm in the parking lot. <laughs> Teaching is powerful. Replying or reconnect ASAP. Amen. That is so awesome. Being a part is definitely well worth it. Amen. Thank you so much. And I pray that there's not only a physical transaction, but a spiritual transaction getting to you as a partner. That you receive the profit reward and that your life will t- become a blessing. That's important. Pastor, I miss C part because of my internet. You can go back and listen to it. But how about the CS? Seers, that's something totally different, guys. Remember, before prophets were called prophets, they were called seers, and uh, I'm not teaching really on that tonight. Um, different perspective, never looked at the word like that. Amen. Happy to catch you live, watching from Florida. Thank you so much. Lisa, I've been, been feeling a physical sensation when I pray in my stomach, almost vaguely like my muscles. And also, when you pray tongues, you pray out of your belly. You don't pray out of your mind. So when people try to, why? The Bible says when we pray in tongues, the mind is unfruitful. Oh, people are like, where's the scripture where we don't speak out of our mind? Right there. When I pray in tongues, I pray out, I do, the mind is unfruitful. Let's go, don't know, to buy it. Q&A later, definitely some clarity needed on some things you said. Yeah, of course. MB. You can even drop some questions now, like when I'm in a place where I'm reading comments, 
I can answer some things. Then I'm moving back to the teaching again. Uh, Prophet, I once had a dream, blew me and felt like my belly was about to explode and you declared over me. I don't know the interpretation of the dream. Amen. I mean, what is the prophet's reward? Oh, actually the prophet's reward is prophecy. But uh, that is a whole teaching that I will, we'll get into. We have it on our website, I believe. Encounter soul food, amen. Uh, the mind is unfruitful. I can't trust my dreams. You're from Louisiana. Good to see you, partner. is a blessing, amen. Uh, the pretender, this is mind-blowing. I love to sit on the beach at night and just listen always. Said to me, the sea is one of the most beautiful creations. I felt close to the Lord. Look, guys, so even though I say the sea is the devil's domain, remember the earth is the Lord's. Okay, so it is just when you look at the spiritual phenomena and usually the location of spiritual beings and that is really associated with scripture, it is that. But I also love the ocean. I mean, one of my best places is to be on the beach. So please don't take what I say in a sense of religion. How did you find out you were a prophet? A God told me. An encounter. At least three encounters relative to the call of a prophet. And that's actually something I would have touched on tonight. On how do you know if you are a prophet? You don't just feel you are a prophet. <laughs> God will tell you you're a prophet. When it comes to the office gifts, usually, God will tell you. Love that new age to truth takes over the revelation, goes deep, deep, deep. Amen. And the truth will always trumps and triumph over new age. New age will tell you you are God. Not that you are a God. We understand the prophetic revelation that you are a God, but New Age will tell you you are God. New Age will tell you your consciousness is your reality. Or what your supper, or everything in your consciousness is your reality. They'll talk a whole lot of nonsense that really means nothing. And there's a lot of metaphysical things that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's get into the teaching. Back into the teaching. I understand probably don't make sense. I'm just reading your comments here. Let's get back. That was a short break. Um, thank you for those who are signing up for uh, uh, partnership. I'll be praying for you. And I do see all the new partners coming up. And uh, yeah, thanks for those that sometimes if I haven't come online with our partners, that they still remain partners, still remain faithful. God is surely going to reward you. And uh, you will you will be blessed. God is raising up prophets in this hour. I want to make that very clear. God is raising up prophets. It is the decade of prophets. God is raising up prophets. He's pulling them out of the caves. He's pulling them out of obscurity. He's pulling them out of obfuscation. He's pulling them out of hiding. He's pulling them out of places of darkness that they've been hidden. And he's going to give them platforms out of hiding, is going to make their voices popular again. It is the decade of prophets. Uh, once we hit five, seven, eight, zero, we enter into the decade of the mouth, the prophetic, the ability to speak God's mouthpiece. So you're going to see a resurgence of the prophetic voices, especially as we enter into the digital age. Do you know that 2020 happened? so that there could be a shift and a transition into the digital age. The world would not have gone into the digital age unless 2020 happened. I'm going to say it again. 2020 was the official shifting and purpose of God. Mm. I will even go as deep and dare to say that 2020 was on the agenda of God to shift the world into the digital age. The world has to be shifted into the digital age for Revelation, the book of Revelation to come to pass. How will everybody see the dead bodies? How will everybody see the death of the two prophets? How will everybody see the Lord returning in the clouds? 
How will the whole world see it? So the world has to be shifted into the digital age, which happened 2020. It was forced. Everybody was forced to shift to digital. That's why the church is in trouble unless the church goes digital. What is the agenda of God? There's a digital church that's going to rise. God is giving, when prophets have been prophesying for many years, saying, oh, the Lord is going to raise up hidden voices. He's going to raise up, you know, the faceless generation, all these things. Well, now he's doing it and everybody's fighting it. He's making TikTok influencers to be gay prophets. We had some TikTok videos. I think it, both of them are 2.8 million. No, no, no. It jumped to 2.8. It's on 2.8, the second one. It jumped to 2.8, yeah. Both on 2.8. Instagram is over a million. YouTube is almost 200,000 on a video. But um, I mean, for look, South Africa, it is a real breakthrough. Okay, so um, for our South Africa ministers. So... Please think of 2020 like this, that everything is going to digital. We're moving into a fourth industrial revolution age and a lot of businesses are struggling to pivot. And this is what I'm going to get into also on Monday morning with the business people with a favor in the marketplace with the Bosoniki. It's only physical, not online, guys. The one in Monday. It's at his premises, at NBCFC's premises. And you can go to their website or ask anybody on here. They'll give you the address. But that is for business people only. They're preparing a digital Jesus to pretend to come to the clouds. This is what I heard. Oh yeah, that's another thing I could get onto. Sure. Believe it or not. So they are actually, do you know that the government is preparing a smokescreen of the return of Jesus Christ? The same way they are preparing an alien invasion. They, they're doing it. Yeah, but they're going to do the, the rapture also and the return of Jesus Christ as well. They're going to do it. There's going to be a technology tax that's going to come in that is going to cripple many. But I'm just going to leave that there. So... 400 on, on, on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys. On YouTube, give it a thumbs up. We're going to get back into the teaching right now. But I'm speaking to you prophetically, and uh, I'm just feeling in the spirit. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like for the YouTube algorithm to go. And um, Facebook, share, like. Love you all. Let's get back into the teaching. So I spoke on a lot of things. The, th the first brain, the second brain, the third brain. Spoke about the gut, the solar plexus, the belly where the voice of God comes out of. I spoke about the ability to feel God, the voices, the ears of the different kingdoms. And uh, now let's get into the actual sensations of God. Acts chapter number 27, verse 10. Acts 27. So I kept you here for... Um, for this, and I don't have much time left, but let's get into this. Acts chapter number 27, verse 10 says, let me read it, I'm going to read it out of the NIV. The Apostle Paul is saying, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. Paul is saying, I can see in, another, in the King James Version, it says, I perceive. You see, this word perceive is not saying the Lord is saying. It is not saying uh, the Holy Spirit is saying. It is not saying, uh, an angel told me, he's saying simply I had the, the spiritual perception to perceive that something will happen. So God gives each person the ability to perceive things spiritually outside of his voice, which we can also say is his voice. So listen, tonight we're speaking about the voice of God, secrets to hearing the voice of God. I'm getting into the sensations of the Spirit. The sensations of the Spirit. Because God speaks in sensations, He speaks in feelings, He speaks in perceptions, and then we have to interpret it into the linguistic, into a language, into what God is saying. So how do you interpret a feeling to what God is saying, is what we're doing tonight. So when people, it's like the, the, what I said to you now about Paul perceiving this in his spirit, it is like the green light 
yellow light, red light scenario, green lights in my spirit, I have a green light in my gut feeling, I have a green light, that means I go ahead, yellow light, maybe, let me just hold on and wait for God more, is my volume right on this thing, even if I go away like this, okay, and then the red light says a stop, don't go, when people violate that, they begin to get a hardened heart, a seared conscience and they battle to hear the voice of God again in that area. So, before I, I'm, I'm going to give you about four or five sensations of how God speaks from feelings that come. But before I get into it, I want to make this clear. When it comes to God's voice coming in a sensation, the principle of being close to the subject must be adhered to. Why did we just suddenly drop so much on YouTube? So the subject of being close to the object, the principle of being close to the object must be adhered to. That means that I might not know if it is God's will for me to buy a car unless I go to the dealership and I'm about to sign the papers. I will have the feeling. So I have to be close. How do I know if a house, I'm buying a house, is it God's will or not? I have to be in the house with the agent ready to sign the deal. There's something that requires my spirit man to, to be close, to be close up to the subject. Like Joshua had to be close with the Urim and Theorem to find the accursed object. So Acts, let me get to this, Acts 15, verse 34 to 35, Acts 15, says this, However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Listen to this. It seemed good, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. So only once they choose and it seemed good to remain in a certain area that they find out they could move on with the move of God there. They had to be close to it. Uh, so we see Paul had a first missionary journey. We see Paul having a second, second missionary journey. We see when Paul having a, f a first missionary journey, God spoke to him very clearly. The Bible says in Acts 13 verse 2 that the Holy Spirit spoke to the leaders there who were fasting and said, separate unto me Paul and Barnab Barnabas, Saul and Barnabas for the work which I have called them. We see uh, uh, it was a clear speaking but when it comes to Paul's secondary trip, his secondary missionary, it was not such a clear speaking. It was more of a perception that came in. So when it comes to different levels of your ministry, God won't always speak the same. God spoke to me through an angel to plant the church encounter, but it doesn't mean he's going to speak to me through another angel again for another phase of my ministry. And a lot of people want to buck, box God up in tradition to say, the way God did it, he must do it again. Or the way God did it with me, he must do it with others. That is called tradition, legalism, rules. And we grieve and quench the spirit of God like that. We limit God this way. Paul would have never experienced his secondary missionary trip uh, journey if he said he wanted to have the same encounter or the same experience which called him in Acts 13 verse 2. I hope you guys are still okay. We're getting now into the teaching. So now it's out of the fun stuff getting into the teaching. Okay. Well, I mean, teaching is not fun. Of course it is, but I was speaking on some sensational topics earlier. Right now, we are getting into the word, getting to the teaching of the sensations of the Spirit of God. 
So let's not put God in a box on how God speaks. When I say secrets to hearing God's voice, a lot of people think a dream, a vision, audible voice, the word or prophecy. No, 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 no. God speaks in so many different facets. So many different facets. And I need to, I see my hair is standing all out. I need to do my hair. I have this hair that's like standing out here and catching the light, so it makes me look old. Uh, Evangeline, this is really helping me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's get into the first sensation. I want to use the word sensation, if I may, or a feeling. The first feeling. Let's go on feeling. The feelings of God, the feelings of the Spirit. The first feeling is what we call being smitten. Being smitten. The first feeling is being smitten. Let me read to you a scripture. 1 Samuel chapter number 24, verse 3. 1 Samuel 24, verse 3. So the first feeling is smitten. It says, and he came to the sheep falls, by the way, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. And the men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I'll give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it shall seem good to you. Isn't it amazing how your friends can quote God to get you into trouble? They even quoted him and says, listen here, this is the prophecy that God has given you. I will give your enemy into your hand. Here he is right now. But that was his spiritual father he was touching. So David went right up to Saul, cut off a piece of his garment, of his robe. The Bible says, then David arose stealthily, cut off the skirt of Saul's robe. So what do we see here? We see David crossing the line. We see David getting close to and first doing something before he feels being smitten. So when I'm speaking about the feeling of being to be smite, smitten, is that right word smitten? For to, when somebody smites you, hits you, strikes you. The Holy Spirit, one of the ways of the feelings of God is to be struck by the Holy Ghost. It's the feeling of smitten. So David did wrong. He cut off the corner. And only once he cut off the corner, the Bible says in verse 5, it says afterwards, David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. David's heart smote him because he cut off Saul's skirt. So only afterwards, have you made decisions and you know, afterwards you realize, ah, oh, I made the wrong decision and your heart just struck you. What happened is your conscience struck your heart, but it is only afterwards. And you're thinking, why could I not have learned this lesson beforehand? It is because that thing was not designed to destroy you. It was designed to teach you something. A lot of people make bad decisions, whether it is to leave spiritual parents, whether it is to change a job, whether it is to change a uh, a location, whatever it might be, change relationships, and afterwards they're like, ah, oh, I made the wrong decision. And their heart struck them. It is the sense, and people, a lot of times, especially now, because people are now these days so carnal and rebellious, they're just, ah, oh, no, this is just a normal feeling. No, 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 no. It is the voice of God speaking to you, convicting you. Actually, it is a condemning voice that comes. And I know it doesn't sound good. The reason why I'm using the word condemning is because the word smite actually means to kill one another. It was used in the Old Testament for the Hebrew word naka. Naka, when it says that the Lord smote the people and killed them. That the Lord smote the people and killed them. So that feeling that you get, it's almost like the Lord is killing you. It's like your heart is being struck with a knife. It feels like a knife has gone into your heart. Have you ever betrayed somebody and afterwards you feel so bad? This feeling caused Judas to commit suicide. And guess what? Judas only felt it afterwards. What happened with Peter? Peter only felt it afterwards. The feeling of being smitten only comes afterwards. 
So this is the first feeling. And now what is this? It is the voice of God. So I want us to get out of the realm that God only speaks through the word, visions and dreams and prophecy because many times we battle to, now you should be easy to get the God's voice out of his word, but get into feelings. God speaks to you like that. It's like, you know, you're stealing an office pen, a pen of your work, and you don't feel anything until you take, until at home you see the pen, you realize you stole it. And then that feeling of conviction comes. If you have any integrity, moral compass in you. Or somebody using work, they entrust with monies and they're using work monies. So the feeling of smitten, being smitten, to be smote, comes because we are not sensitive to the Lord's voice before it happens. It is God's mercy, not His grace. Feelings seem to be a scary way to act. I'm not understanding that. So remember, I know everybody says, don't live by feelings and all this stuff. You must live by faith. I'm not speaking in this context of feelings. I'm speaking now of feelings of your spirit man. Not feelings... Thank you very much for this. So helpful more than you know. And I'm only touching on the one. I'm still getting to number two. So when you're being smote, you lose your joy. You lose the joy of your salvation. We see with King David in Psalm 51, where his whole psalm that is known for him repenting to the Lord about the sin that he committed. He prayed this prayer. He says, you have broken my, the bones you have broken. He said, Lord, you have broken my bones. What happened? He had the feeling as if his bones was broken. His bones wasn't physically broken. It was a feeling. And then he says this. He said, he said return to me the joy of your salvation. Return to me the joy of your salvation. They say James Gall calls it the feeler. That's right. He calls it the feeler. I think he actually wrote a book about it. I've never read it. But I think I saw the title on one of James Cole's books, Prophet James Cole, The Feeler. It's the, I call it the knower, the solar plexus. It's a book, yeah. I never read it. I'm, I'm not sure how, how it is. But uh, So King David says, return to me the joy. So, so when he got smite, smitten, however you pronounce it, he smote cut to the heart he lost the joy of his salvation he lost the joy of his salvation can this stream to the mighty app also or not but we don't want to we want to keep it on YouTube yeah, it can be an RTMP not I thought they did an RTMP don't they do it Oh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, okay. We we don't we don't want to do that like that. Anointing lifts quick with disobedience for sure. Yeah. So 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 it is like a slap that you get. You know. I mean, if you look at David, David didn't even when he cut off the piece of Saul's garment, he literally just. He didn't break the Ten Commandments, yet he got a slap. So think of it like this. David cut the rope, which represents the anointing. And Saul tore the rope off of Samuel. God didn't cut out David, yet he cut out Saul. So it depends to the degree of how Oh, so, sorry, Saul ripped it, David cut it, yes. yet they were judged differently, which now we get into the favoritism of God. 
God's favorites, whom God likes. Because it comes to tone. When Saul grabbed Samuel's garment, it was done with a tone of intensity. When David cut the, tone, cut the, the robe of Saul, it was done with a different tone. It was done with a tone where he was just defending himself, thinking, maybe opened up his ears, but he immediately repented. repented. Do you know, People lie so easily. Is lying part of the Ten Commandments? What number is lying? I mean, it is, but what number is lying? The Ninth Commandment. The ninth commandment. To bear false witness. Yeah. How many of you have lied today? Yet, divorce is not part of the Ten Commandments. But we banish people when they divorce. That's another subject for another day. Mm-hmm. I'm just reading your comments. I'm just checking your comments. So the church has gotten it very wrong when it comes to divorce and they destroyed a lot of marriages. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, tone is very important. The New Testament works on virtue not on law the way we think it is. Because if we say we shall not lie, why was the prostitute Rahab listed in the hall of faith for lying? Why was Rahab the the P, and I shouldn't be saying that actually because there's certain words that are censored. Why was she lying and because of lying be listed in the hall of faith? Yet the Ten Commandments says, do not lie. So there is when it comes to sin, when it comes to principles in the New Testament, it's what we call a virtuous type. So you can do something when the virtue behind it is good. And I will teach on that on a whole nother day. So the New Testament is all about the tone. Where religion wants to make it all about the language, all about the, fr- the what is on surface level. You, you know, um, the Pharisee says, I tithe, I fast, I pray. And the other man beating his chest, saying, I'm not worthy. So that is all another thing, and I'm, I'm saying this, David lied. Oh, so many people lied. Abraham lied. Yeah. But now it comes to why does God judge David? Or oh, sorry, Saul and not David. Both of them tore the corner of the rope, which is the anointing. Because God has favorites relative to election, first of all. Secondly, relative to faith. Because how did Abram become a friend of God? By faith. So we see favoritism come in by faith. So it's by election. It's by faith. It is, so election is your importance, your calling. Then it is by faith. Then it is by simply getting God's favor on you. There are people whom God likes and then there are people whom God loves. 
Like is more powerful than love. That is why Facebook has like and not love on a comment, on a post. Now you can love, but the concept, they have like and not love. Because like is more powerful than love in today's culture. You can love somebody because you have to. When you love somebody, you don't spend time with them. When you like someone, you spend time with them. So God spends time with those he likes. Who are those he likes? The third category is those who fear him. So God shares his secrets with those who fears him. The fear of Isaac, the Bible says. The fear of Isaac. When Jacob spoke of Isaac, he said, he said, my, my, uh, uh, my father Isaac, I speak about, when I speak about his God, I call it the fear of Isaac. So I call God his fear. Do you know one of God's names was fear? The fear of Isaac. So there's a big difference between like or love. God liked Abraham. God like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God loves everyone, but he only likes some. And those he likes, he gives favor to. And whom God likes, we might not like. And then we begin to think, how can God use that one? Because God likes them. But they swear, so what? But they do this, so what? God likes them. It is the realm of God that we cannot dispute. It is the realm of God that we cannot argue. The realm that God likes. The Ratsa anointing. King David said, He made me king simply because he liked me. David said in the book of Chronicles, He made me king simply because he liked me. So do God like you? Does God like you? God likes you on the basis of your heart tone. God likes you on the basis of the tone that your heart speaks. Not on the outward actions. That is why God likes people whom we write off. That is why God likes people whom we write off. That is why God promotes ministers whom the body of Christ have ostracized and written off. That is why God approves whom man disapproves. God likes you on the basis of your heart, not your linguistic, not your language, not what comes out of your mouth. I am a God that looks upon the heart. I do not see as man sees, for I am the God that looks upon the heart. Prophets do not read minds. Prophet reads, prophets, reads, re, prophets read hearts. Prophets do not read minds. Prophets read hearts. Unfortunately, many think deeply with their hearts. That's why prophets can read their thoughts. Because that thought comes from the heart. Mm. Do you know what is the other sad thing for me? People are no longer rebukable. People are no longer rebukable. People... One rebuke you give them, they want to leave you. One test you give them. It is a generation that has been bred to want to have instant gratification and instant success. God has testings. God, are you rebukable? Am I able to come to you and rebuke you? And you still love me and we still walk on. And you learn from that lesson, you become without packing my bags up and go. 
people in the local church can no longer stand or receive a rebuke. Hey, Reynard, good to see you. And I'm going to see you soon. And I think you missed an incredible teaching if you weren't online already. Like I shared so many things that's so, that was really good. If I have to say so myself. The love of money is evil. Where are you guys coming in with that right now? Where were we now? Rebuke. Are you rebukable? Are you rebukable? Are you able to be tested, to be rebuked without throwing your toys out of the cot, being deceived, falling into pride to defend and cover and listening to another voice or run away or attack and defend and justify? And are you able to be rebuked and taught? Because if you cannot be rebuked by man, you cannot hear the voice of God. Because how can those, how can those, how can you submit to a God you cannot see when you cannot submit to a man who you can see? God rebukes, God chastises, he disciplines. God is angry with many. Make sure he becomes to be, he, be, he begins to like you. Receive a rebuke. Without saying, I'm going to go find myself another pastor. I'm going to find myself another voice. The Bible says they will have itching ears. They will heap up for themselves teachers with their itching ears in the end days. What does it mean? It means church hopping. It doesn't mean they're going to make people say what they want to hear. People, you know, they're like, oh, you know, these prophets and Leon and all of them, they're just preaching prosperity because people are heaping for themselves up teachers. With it. No, that's not what it means. It means that if I don't like this one, I'm going to run to another one. And that is the disease that the digital church is going to bring in. That is the problem, the dilemma that the digital church, the online church is going to bring in. Is that there are so many voices to confuse. When people are offended, they don't know they are offended. You need to trust the voice that speaks to you humble that's why the bible says that god gives grace to the humble and he resists the proud if my voice over me says you took offense i'm like yes i'm so sorry and i listen to them even though i feel i haven't taken offense and i repent and three months later i realize i actually did take offense but because i submitted and i stayed i passed the test but pride will tell me i didn't take offense offense will always say they never took offense pride will always say they don't have pride how do I know somebody has pride I tell you you have pride and then you say you don't have pride then you have pride <laughs> it's not a nice message So many will be deceived in the end, but how will it happen through offense in Matthew chapter number 24? Offense will bring deception. I've been through so many tests that I can tell you God works with rebukes. God loves those who eat rebukes. God loves those he rebukes. God loves those he rebukes. Let's get back into the teaching. We're, we're by the first feeling only. Okay, I need to finish this up unless if we're going to go to a part two. No, I don't want to go to part two. The, the second feeling is what we call the feeling of grief. It's a sensation, it's a feeling. It's a feeling of grief. A feeling of grief. 
the Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve him. The word grieve is lupio in the Greek. It means sorrow, sadness to the point of the pain of when a spouse commits adultery. It is that place of grief. This is not like a smut, being smitten or a slap. It is a pain of grief and pain and a feeling of pain and grief and sadness that comes into your spirit. It is, I've dealt with ministers sometimes that lost a lot of things or lost everything by virtue of a wrong decision and then that grief comes in. It is also a way the Holy Spirit speaks to try to pull you back to Him. So the first sensation, first feeling is like God slapping you because you touch the, it's, it's, it's usually used in context of touching the anointing or the authority or dealing ag even against God's voice, against what God is saying, against authority, God's voice on the earth, God's voice in heaven, the anointing, and then God slaps you. The Holy Ghost slaps you. In the Old Testament, he would have killed you. In the New Testament, he slaps you. The second feeling is like when we cross the line with a word of God, in the area of the word of God, and then we begin to grieve him. You know, and an example of this is an Acts, where the Bible says that they were cut to the heart. Acts 2, verse 37, that they were cut to the heart. When Peter and the rest of the apostles were speaking, and they said, brethren, what shall we do? They were cut to the heart. We see it also in Acts 7 verse 51 where, uh, the, uh, where, where the Bible says you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. We see they were also cut to the heart there, but they resisted the cutting. Where in Acts chapter 2 verse 37, they accepted the cutting and they responded well. So some pe people respond differently under correction, that will determine their pride or their humility. So let's go to the third feeling. I want to give you four, five. Let's get to the third feeling. It is the feeling of quenching the spirit. It is the feeling of quenching. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 says, do not quench the spirit. The word quench in the Greek is the word uh, spenumai. Spenumai. And it means to extinguish a fire. To put out a fire. So this happens, a quenching feeling will come into your spirit when you have lost a loss of zeal. Not only when you are losing your zeal, but when you are trying to make others lose their zeal. And I'll get into that just now. There's a difference between grieving and quenching. Let me give you an example. Grieving is pain, hurting, sorrow, causing pain. Quenching is extinguishing the fire of the Holy Spirit, extinguish, stopping the flow of the Holy Spirit. So where revival is breaking out, for example, let's take Asbury Revival. Do you think they quenched the Holy Spirit by stopping the revival? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you guys think, because they stopped the revival yesterday, I think. Let me know if you think they quenched. Now they're a bunch of Methodists. I wouldn't expect anything more. I'm not saying God didn't move. God really moved there. Okay. I'm just saying the leadership. Isn't the leadership Methodists? I think so. Yeah, they are. I think so. So we can expect that. I don't know how to cast out a devil. Uh, Daniel and Jenny's guys had to cast out the demon there. They wanted to call the paramedics because they're Methodists. Yes, that's right, they did. So they definitely quenched the spirit. Because the town said they cannot handle the numbers. Is the town stupid? You would think people would have more common sense than that. It's tourism. It's money. Anyway. So, yeah, you can quench something. 
and when you're being quenched. So, so another way I quench the spirit is when I despise prophecies. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 and 20 says, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Do not despise prophecies. So the moment I do it with somebody else, I'm quenching it, but people will feel it. Never hang around with people who are quenching the spirit. Never hang around with those. New Orleans, there's millions of people sitting for pagan Mardi Gras, but they quench the spirit. Stop exactly. Mardi Gras, millions of people yet. Oh, there's 20,000 people, 50,000, whatever there was. Let's stop it. You better be kidding me. You see what the devil wants to do. Now they say it is the wisdom of God. Nonsense. The wisdom of God. Anyway, we're not responsible. And I believe what God has started, they will carry on and people will carry it. And it's a beautiful thing. And uh, uh, I actually didn't follow it that much. I was busy with some other things, but it's, it's a revival being poured out in that way is always, always awesome. Always awesome. I've been in revivals like that. I've been, uh, I had a part of the South American revival. It was incredible. Stop so when we stop providing me. So, 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 don't hang around people who are quenching the spirit. Because you would want to do something, they'll tell you, oh, you know, you're emotional. Now, I'm not speaking of people to rebelling against the leadership. Okay? So, let's get into the fourth feeling. The four, so, the three feelings I gave you now is negative. We spoke on being smitten, slapped by the Holy Ghost. We spoke about, what was the second one? Number one was smitten. Number two was to grieve. Number three was to quench. The fourth feeling is now getting positive. It's what we call the feeling of warmness. The feeling of warmness. The feeling of warmness. So that is when that heat, that warmthness, it'll feel like hot oil on you. And not necessarily on your head. I'm speaking very specifically right now here. It's like you would sit, you would sometimes listen to revelation and it feels like heat is coming here into you. Or how many of you have daydreamed in a vision of the Lord where you would see yourself preaching where you would, and you would feel like this heat coming in? It's the warmness feeling of the Spirit. So Luke chapter number 24, verse 32 says this, They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while He talked to us on the road, while He opened to us the Scriptures? When the, while, listen, not while He read the Scriptures, while He opened the Scriptures, there is a difference between reading the scriptures and the scriptures being open to you. Jesus didn't read the scriptures or quote the scriptures. Jesus opened the scriptures. When the scriptures are open to you, you are receiving a hot, warm feeling into your spirit. So when you have the ability, I have the ability to take this word and open it to somebody. I mean... The Bible says, by the entrance of the word, light comes. He giveth light by the entrance, by the opening up of his word. So what is that light? It is a heat that comes into your spirit, man. The solar plexus, your diaphragm, the belly, the womb of your spirit, the matrix of your spirit. And it heats it up. It is the voice of God. It is a feeling of warmness and is an indication of the will of God in your life. They said that our hearts not burn within us. The word burn is what we call kayo. It means burning. Very simple. It just means a heat that is going to come up. 
the feeling in your diaphragm, in your spirit, man, in your knower, like James Gall would say, in your feeler. Usually, the prophetic anointing will carry that feeling. And when the prophetic anointing would be opening up the words, it would be a feeling that comes, that heat coming into your solar plexus, into your spirit. It is a sense and a sign that God is speaking directly from heaven and is doing a, I don't know how to say it. It is different from just a pastor preaching, even a revivalist preaching to a prophet that is opening up the word that touches your spirit man and it brings life. You see, when the disciples on the road of Emmaus walked there, they didn't know they were walking with Jesus. But something was telling them this is God. And we cannot let this person go. This person must abide with us. Because there's a heat that is coming up in our spirits. It is a quickening. I see somebody saying quickening. Yes, that's a, it's a quickening, but a quickening is like, there's a energizing, but this, I'm speaking of a heat. So it's like a quickening, but in a stronger way. It's your most inner being. So, it is a real physical warm feeling. In fact, even if you have to put a thermometer there, I'll tell you now, it will be picked up. Because there's an energy that is released and that is not new age energy. It's the energy of heaven. New age energy nonsense is metaphysical and the demonic then harbors onto it. Okay? And then they'll say that we are energy, God is energy. No, God is not energy. We are not energy. Demons are not energy. Demons are entities. We are entities. God are personalities. God is a personality and the source of all. He's not an energy. But there's energy, the working of God. The fifth feeling, the fifth feeling, I'm just checking your comments here as I'm, as I'm, as I'm, how do you send stars? I think on Facebook, you should just have the ability to send stars. If you don't, then it's not unlocked. It's, it's, yeah, it can be some, some specific devices are blocked on Facebook. It's like temporary, it changes. Sometimes it's temporary blocked. Sometimes you're not able in your country. Sometimes you, yeah. can, but most should be able to send stars on Facebook. Right? It should be right there at the bottom, say it yeah. send stars or something if like that. If it's on your device, it'll show. It'll if it's on your device, it'll show. So, 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 let's get to the last one. The fifth feeling is what I call the feeling of goodness and sweetness. The feeling of goodness and sweetness. The feeling of goodness and sweetness. And remember, guys, your credit card has to be connected to your Facebook to give. So, you have to have your credit card connected to Facebook. Or your app store. And you have to have your credit card on your app store, obviously. And, you know, um, let's get to, so the feeling of goodness and sweetness. Acts 15 verse 28, it says this, For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Here they are saying, thank you for the super chat, guys. Deepa, thank you. Yeah, they're saying, listen, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and it seemed good to us. But how did we know it is the Holy Spirit? Because it was a feeling of goodness and sweetness. It was a feeling of goodness and sweetness. The only problem with this word sweetness and goodness is that it is also used in the same context as anxiety in a verse where Paul is saying that I, the care and the anxieties of all churches is on me. 
And when he uses the word there, anxiety is also used the word sweet. It's speaking of a more of a loving concern that he has, a sweetness, a goodness, a feeling of love that he has towards the churches. So this is not a warm feeling. It is a just a feeling of goodness and sweetness. It is like a positive concern you might have towards someone, towards a church, towards a leader. It's like a, you just have this concern and this care. It means God is in it. A pastor would usually have that for his people. So remember, this is the feeling of goodness and sweetness, not warmth anymore. Not heat. Is the prophetic anointing different from being a prophet? Yes, it is. But there's a prophetic anointing that only comes with a prophet also. Um, but all those things we do teach in our prophetic schools and so on. Uh, you have mentioned the burning in your stomach. What does it mean when the feeling starts there and move all the way up to your forehead, feeling that there's something written? Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. I don't know about that, guys. <laughs> I just stick to scripture. Okay. I just stick to scripture. So, yes, peace of God. The Bible says that we shall be led, that the umpire, the peace, the umpire is the peace. Sorry? Make peace. Let peace. Let, so it says, let peace be the umpire. Let peace be the referee of your heart. Let peace tell you what to do or not. So this feeling of goodness and sweetness is a feeling of sudden peace also that comes on you. So these are five feelings, and these are just simple feelings. I've given you this actually much more. Maybe we'll do a part two of the secrets during the voice of God, depending on people's demand, and I can get into some more things. But these are just five simple feelings, practical feelings that every single believer should be able to have and know and how, know how to understand and then interpret from there on the voice of God. Is compassion? Yes, compassion is also related. Related, it's not the same word, obviously, but it is related to the compassion. Is the Greek word? What is it? Uh, the uh, it slipped my mind right now. It is the um, compassion. It's with the. It's it. It means in the Greek the intestines of an animal. It is when you have a uh, a pulling towards somebody. You can miracles only comes by compassion. It is the. It starts with an S. What is the splankna? It is the splankna of God. So yes, that is also, it is a compassion that comes on you that just wants to care for somebody in that way. It is a feeling that it is God speaking to you. So guys, all these things is feelings of God speaking to you. Can anyone lay a hand on you and exchange your destiny? No. God is the God of destinies, not man. People can steal your star. That comes in a variety of ways. And I'll maybe preach on stars still. When we get stars as astronomy, stars as astrology, stars as... Uh, um, Stars as destiny, stars as signs. We'll still preach on it. I'll still maybe touch on numbering connected to angels. A lot of people will say they see 11, 11, and this and that. Uh, have you ever watched that movie? Oh, you have watched the movie Interstellar? I'll leave it at that. When you look at communication from one world to another, 
when why is certain numbers following certain people and you see how angels are connected to numbers angels don't just appear as a light anyway but on these things i share too much that's for our partners i'll include that into our angelology course angel angelology course on some have a slip of the tongue uh angelology course on our partners platform which is already started we already started part one this week is coming part two and uh, obviously part one is available for our partners and any new partners going up kind of vision with stars mean congregation it really depends we'd love to hear you preach on stars and numbers amen becky weaver a lot of people have questions regarding these things angels are made of eyes let me correct you there angels are not made of eyes the what was the eye the cherubim is the cherubim is made of eyes is a cherubim an angel according to real scripture it is not an angel is a messenger which is the lowest level of the nine choirs and the nine orders of angels so a cherubim is not an angel a cherubim is a son of god and it is a creature it is yeah just because they cover doesn't mean they're made of eyes but we just think angels and we think seraphim so angels no 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 i i know it's a nice preaching and it's nice but theologically correct it's not it's not there are creatures sons ben hai elohim uh, you have many the seraphims the cherubims so you have seraphims you have cherubims you have uh you have thrones that's the first highest choir the middle choir is dominions virtues what is uh, dominions virtues powers just want to run on the mess dominions virtues powers yes that's the middle choir the lo- lo- the, the lowest choir is is a uh, archangel principalities archangels and angels that's now getting the messengers of god becoming the messengers of god so angelology is a very 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 deep So let's open for 5 minutes of questions guys 5 minutes of questions and then I'm going to pray for you Or actually right before we do it if you feel right before we get to questions I'm going to get to questions right now but if you feel that this message has blessed you if you feel that uh you received something consider sowing a seed you can sow in either of these accounts just to let you know the one year is our encounter church account that goes into our church and the one year is our prophetic ministry both of them are kind of like used for the same thing but this really focuses on the broadcasting ministry it focuses on our international broadcasting ministry focus on the prophet's reward the prophetic encounter right here we've made that for the prophet's reward and not this for the prophet's reward encounter church okay so uh, there has to be a distinction between the tithe and offering the prophet's reward or if you're blessed so so for broadcasting ministry if you want to give given to this ministry this is app snaps and you can go to the website all the uh, the card giving everything is there available for you on the website so there are two different websites depending which one you want to give you're welcome to give into anything if you are blessed consider giving don't dine and dash uh consider giving if you were fed by this revelation consider giving and uh, we never charge for prophecy we never charge for teaching uh unless we feel we want to give it in a in a uh, educational platform which requires teachers and buildings and etc and or whether it's on a partner platform but otherwise we teach for free we preach for free How do you correct quenching of the spirit you stop quenching him you repent 
I'm sewing. Thank you so much, Johan. Appreciate it. Let me know if you guys are giving. And guys, we will never ask money of you in your inbox. Somebody was taken about two weeks ago. They paid for an appointment with me and then they came to our church to now look for the appointment. We're like, that was a scam fake account. We have so many. We probably have, I don't know how many, 30 yeah. accounts more. Okay, so guys, please do not, any giving us only here, right now live, always live, or it is on our websites. That's it. People were inboxing people on the broadcast as fake profiles already tonight. Yeah, so people were inboxing people already tonight as fake profiles. Guys, I do not ask giving like that. I ask giving like this on a live stream or on, uh, or on, um, on our website. No orphanage. I don't say beloved. Um, okay. Child of God. Beloved. Praying for you. I, don't, don't, I do none of that nonsense. If you feel like you want to give right now, so, so let me just see your comments here, guys. What is a star that you alluded to? I never alluded to a star. I emphatically said a star. Never alluded to it. That is a question we'll get into later. Uh, you know, it can come through abuse and trauma and a lot of things and witchcraft and the occult and a lot of things. Justin, uh, Justin is saying, may I seed via YouTube pay? May I seed via YouTube pay? pay. You yes, just know that when you do that, guys, when you give Super Chat or YouTube, is it YouTube pay the same as Super Chat? Yeah. We, you know, we only get 70%, eh? 60 or 70%, 70%. Okay, if you give stars via Facebook, we get the full amount. Just don't think 50,000 stars is a big amount. It's not. Um, uh, but the best way to give is always directly into our direct giving platforms and channels. And um, I want to pray for those also after you give right now, and then we're going to open up for questions and answers. Do you also feel the heat in your hands? Yes, I do. That is not the same as this, but I do feel the heat in my hands. Usually when the anointing comes, if I have to pray for somebody, uh, I have felt it a lot. I've actually felt fire in my hands many times. Um, my, so let me, I'm reading your comments. I've been taking to space on multiple occasions, close and open visions, meaning riding a satellite around the earth, open portals, seeing angels. Becky Weaver is saying, look, if you see the earth and a vision, it's usually an, a sign of, of a uh, intercessory call. Um, need Jesus to heal my lungs from asthmatic COPD condition and right now we're going to pray for you also tonight for healing seeds sown thank you prophet I don't want to quench God and I want to be prideful welcome to our man I had three friends invites from prophet this week yeah. yeah what does it mean or what's happening when you pray for someone for healing and your hands becomes very hot is that the Holy Spirit yes it is uh, it can be it can be a, a good sign to it since we joined Encounter 29 it's like saying almost fun for us sometimes it hurts but God sees it amen so the prophecy reward. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it, Johan. Uh, love you guys. Uh, scams. Be, be very careful, guys. Be very careful. Blessed by the teaching today. Amen. What does the heat in your hands mean? No, nothing really. There's no specific meaning in Scripture. It just can mean whatever. Holy Spirit is working through the fire of God. Um, Prophet, why have you stopped seeing, why have I stopped seeing visions? Can that be taken away? It can uh, for a time. And remember, you don't see visions because of your will. You see visions because it's God who chooses. Okay. Um, there can be a lot of things. Maybe you're not in, um, on Facebook. See, so people are sending, obviously, invites now, you criminals. What is that? What is the star? How do you stop running from the Lord and let him in when you deeply reject it? What does it mean when the Lord says he's going to point his scepter towards you for healing? Probably means healing. Um, probably means that. Uh, it can be a, prom a prophetic word. It can be a promise that you can trust him for. Super judges, that's why I asked awesome. Thanks, Justin. Does everyone feel the same way with heat? I don't feel heat flushing in my belly. I don't feel heat or flushing in my belly. I want to say everybody feels the same way, but I think we can all, it should be. Um, it should be. I think a lot of people don't become sensitive to the Holy Spirit fully, and they battle with that. 
So thank you so much. Just joining for a few from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Awesome. Welcome. Don Sohn into Prophetic. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And those who just came on, guys, we're not asking money all the time. We literally were teaching for two and a half hours and just giving an opportunity for people to give. That's all. Um, what is the heat in your hands while you pray? Mean, please, Prophet. Uh, thank you. Why is people always asking about the hands? Uh, um, I'd rather give you give by your platform. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for saying this ministry. Can you talk about Jesus being rich, please? Of course. Jesus re inherited, no, no, sorry. Uh, Jesus was given a king's bounty by the Magi that came to him, traveled for two years to find him. Uh, not only three Magi, yeah. there were three types of gifts, but it was many Magi. The gold was a bounty's treasure. There were a king's treasure, a king's bounty, a king's treasure. Uh, it was an estimate of 14 million US dollars that was given to him in today's uh, in today's value and that was then overseen in a type of a trust if we can say it like that by his um, uncle or someone like that called jo uh, Joseph of Arimathea uh, I believe it was his uncle of his uh, earthly father uh, Joseph of Arimathea or his earthly family and then uh, we see that money also being released to him really at the age of 13 when he started his ministry that's why he had a treasurer and a treasury that is why he could feed 15,000 people in the one crusade uh, that is why he could look after his disciples that is why he said the son of man has nowhere to lay his head because he was so wealthy at so many places to lay his head he didn't have to have one fixed place he was traveling all over um uh, what i mean by wealthy it's just a it's just a uh, it's just i mean i use that scripture now just in a in a uh, tongue-in-cheek way but um because somebody doesn't have a, a fixed home doesn't mean they're poor okay so jesus was very wealthy he, 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 his, his robe was so f of fine quality that they that they gambled for his robe um uh, it, it, it was a yeah, it was a seamless robe, so that is equal to your top name brand today. He yeah, and, and I can go on and on and on and on. So Jesus was very rich, contrary to today's. He was even a carpenter, which was a very well-known um, industry uh, those days. So yeah, Jesus was rich. Um, what's the money going to, friend? What's the money going to, friend? Respect. Okay. Uh, I'm not friends, but it's going to ministry. Going to ministry. That our ministry accounts is right there. So that is going towards every, it's not, I don't understand if it's friends or I'm not exactly sure what you guys are saying there. But um, no, it's not going to friends. It's, I don't know, but it's guys used for ministry purposes. <laughs> Uh, they never have to explain ourselves for that. That is clear. Uh, does everyone feel the same way with the heat? I received this prophecy reward. Amen. I'm going to pray for you. I want to solve the broadcast. Thank you so much, Benita. I've got fire and pulsing in my hands. I'm going to give. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Prophet, why have I stopped seeing... Okay, no, why am I repeating stuff here? Let me... Much love. I'm going to get to the comments. Are there questions that you're seeing? Because there's too many for me here. Uh, does Jesus Christ still visit people face to face? Now do you position yourself to receive that visitation? Uh, yes, he can. Um, I still smoke. Uh, I I still smoke. Is that quench the spirit? Uh, uh, yes and no. It depends on where God is at with your journey. What He has asked you. Uh, when we grieve and quench the spirit is when we're not obeying what He's asking us. Okay. Somebody can get saved yesterday and today they're still smoking. It's not necessarily grieving because they're in the process. Of sanctification. Sanctification is a process. Salvation is instant. Justification is instant. Sanctification is a process. Glorification is something in the future that will happen. Lately, I had pain in my heart, please. We're going to pray for those who need healing. Seed son, thank you so much. May God bless you. Stefan, I have a question. You ask the question. I want to know everything. Yeah? Uh, Andrea is saying, I would like to know about the massage therapy if it's okay or not because I was a massage therapist. Okay, well, I, I, I can't really answer on that because it depends what training you received as a massage therapist. I mean, that would be quite common sense relative to know what training. I, I don't think, I mean, I go for massage. It's not really my thing to go for massage, but I mean, I've gone a couple of times. Um, I had to go for certain sport massages. So no, I don't, it just depends what you've been taught and what you've been trained and you should be able to know whether there was some spiritual new age stuff taught or not. I think it's as simple as that. Um, 
Otherwise, I can be enlightened if there's more stuff. I've, I felt goodness flowing through me, a joy. So, image showing me a pillar of fire conference. So blessed, awesome. Uh, Liz is asking, I've had sensations since I was about seven years old. I understand everything you speak because of my revelation since child. How would I know I'm called to prophecy? Okay, well, so first of all, how do I know I'm called to prophecy? There are different levels. So you have a, pro- you have a spirit of prophecy, you have the gift of prophecy, and then you have the office of a prophet. I will teach on those things in our partner section. I will also release some teachings on that. We will begin to release teachings on that. And we do have, it's just not maybe organized. But the spirit of prophecy is different to the gift of prophecy, which is different to the office of a prophet. Actually, there's there's much more. There's the ministry of a prophet. There's the presbytery, the prophetic presbytery. There's prophetic preaching. There's the oracle preaching. So there are many different levels of prophecy, but let's leave to three. The spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the office of a prophet. Um, Everybody has the spirit of prophecy, which is the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, which is the ability to prophesy every believer ability to prophesy of the Holy Holy Spirit. Then you have the gift of prophecy, which is the gift given by the Holy Spirit as He wills. Then you have the office of a prophet given by Jesus Christ as He wills, but then being used in the will of man as man wills uh, at any given time. It's a vocation. It's a full-time occupation. So uh, that is the office of a prophet. The office comes through an encounter with God where God calls you a prophet. We see that in the book of Numbers, I think it is. And... uh, um, in the book of Numbers, and then so you know, and then you have the prophetic anointing, which is different to the spirit of prophecy. Prophetic anointing is what rests on a prophet, and the prophetic anointing is an atmosphere that can come in in a prophetic environment. So I hope that has answered some things. It's a whole teaching that I can't do now. Uh, have you ever seen a cherubim with your spiritual eyes? So guys, let me. I want to debunk something. Outside of your prophets like Isaiah and Ezekiel, you cannot really see cherubims and seraphims. The percent of people that will see that realm of angelic beings, even though they're not angels, are really 1%. Because they are in the, the highest order of that angelic order is in the operation. Their operation is with God, not man's affairs. So principalities, archangels, and angels angels can be seen by because their operations is with men. Unless God reveals it to which we only see as a prophet. Hope that makes sense. Um, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you so much to everybody that's given, guys. I'm going to take the giving off here. Thank you so much to us given. Really bless you. Really appreciate it to everybody that has given. Appreciate. I'm going to pray for you right now. Um, I've had Bob Jones, Catherine Goodman, seen prophesied over my life. Wow. Can you activate these words spoken over your life? So you need to know how to work with prophecies. Not sure if you've been taught on how to, what to do after you've been prophesied. What to do with a prophecy? You need to war with it. You need to speak it. You need to not only war and speak it, you need to do it. <laughs> That's very important. So there's a process on God. Uh, I, I, where is that scripture? It's in Isaiah. We're not going to get it now, but it says that God spoke. He declared, he spoke, and then he did it. So prophecy has to be done. But we know we can't just go do it. It depends on the level of prophecy and so on because it, whether it's something that God is going to bring or, for example, if, I'm set, if I get a prophecy, you call to properties, you're going to be prospering properties and I'm just sitting at home doing nothing. I need to get out and go do properties. That, that's what I mean by that. Totally not related to the stream, but it's, the, but it's been months that I'm pondering on it. When God gives me a dream, it's a very short dream. I'm only saying this because the only dreams where I heard his voice very short dreams. My dream I was standing facing a forest, palm trees not come. And then I brought my hands together, still in the air, and all the trees in the forest. Very powerful dream. I'd like to interpret that, maybe not tonight, but on another time, if you guys do follow our ministry. Um, because very, very powerful, very, very, very powerful dream. Um, trees are speaking of leaders. Speaking of people and leaders, clapping of hands is, is very powerful. That's such a powerful dream. I don't have time to interpret it right now, but... Keep that and please keep pushing me on my ministry with that and I will do it for you. What about, um, 
What can I do? How do you know if God's warning you about something coming or something might be? How does the warning come through a sensation, also a vision? But because that's a very good question. Ask God, immediate vision. That's a very good question. Obviously, a warning. I don't want to limit to say, oh, God can warn. God can warn in anything. But God will warn, first of all, also with a feeling. But his warnings comes also in visions. But mo- but most of the time, according to Scripture, God's warning comes through prophets and dreams. Prophets and dreams, according to Scripture. We see the majority of times coming through prophets and dreams. How do I how to identify false prophetic teachings? Um, does it line up with the mainstream prophetic teachings? And ultimately, what is the fruits? What is the, you know, it's very difficult to say it because you can get some pioneers also. So I would say, first of all, fruits. But let's go back to Jesus' words. You will know them by their fruits. Not fruits of the Spirit, fruits of productivity. What is the purpose of lucid dreams? A uh, big purpose which we did in our dream course, which is available in our part the section. Um, I'm also very empathetic and feeling. Oh, people can also buy the dream interpretation course. We did a dream interpretation course where we teach people how to interpret their own dreams, how to interpret other people's dreams. It's available on our on our websites, leondepreer.com or on Counter Church, leondepreer.com, our ministry website is available there for purchase. If you're part, I think you get it for free. There is one for free. The older one, but it's a good one. Uh, what is the purpose? So, because I see a lot of people asking on dreams. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. I'm reading your um, prophecy. Becky Beaver says, Ben Lim prophesied it. Dr. Ben, what did he? Oh, uh, I, I've had prophetic words spoken over me seeing. Oh, I see. I've had prophetic words spoken over me seeing Bob Jones, Catherine Cool, and William Brandon mantle over my life. Yeah. I can active those mantles or how. Oh, I understand now what you're saying, Becky. Sorry, sorry. I thought you said you had Bob Jones and all of these guys yeah. prophesied over you. Okay, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, of course, with Dr. Ben prophesied over that. Well, that's something if it identifies with your spirit, you need to take that word. Pray into it, really work it. If you're already in the line of doing those things, get to do it. If not, get to do it. But I also always say, guys, do not be led by prophecy. Be led by the Spirit of God. Do not be led by dreams. Don't be led by visions. Be led by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit. Do you have events in the USA this year? We might have one or two coming up. People will be informed of it uh, closer to the time, guys. Do prophets dream a lot? It depends from prophet to prophet. Um, was a great course. Amazing colors. You know what? I saw Pastor Vlad doing this colors yesterday and we chose these colors yesterday and I thought, oh, he has this colors and we only chose this color yesterday. Before, I I saw him like last night. It was like 1 a.m. or so our time. I saw him and then I know me and you chose this earlier and I was like, sure, we chose the same color. Um, Was a great course. The dream course, I could literally see beams of light coming out of your mouth as you were giving prophetic words at the Pillow Fire Conference in Cape Town. Awesome. Uh, someone was asking, us, oh, Julius is asking, how can I get one of your books? Julius is asking, how can you get one of my books? Uh, how can I get your latest book on the Bible? All our books is on my website, guys. Go to leondepria.com. Many books, I think about four or five books is free in our partners. So our partners get those books for f- some books for free, not all our books. But otherwise, you can purchase our books on the Bible book is on Kindle, Amazon on Kindle, or the physical copy on Amazon, or the Kindle version on Amazon. I prefer the physical copy if I was you because it's just, it's such a book that needs to be physical. And then, huh? And it ships anywhere. And then our other books is available on our uh, on our website as ebooks. They will soon be on Amazon. Yeah. Irene, he did the exact same color. Huh? Yeah. I dreamed recently. Prophet Charlie Sham came to pray protection and heal my voice because it was swollen. What is that's powerful because a prophet in your dream means God. So it is simply God doing something through the spirit of a prophet. Um, if you have an importation, how do you maintain it and can you lose it? That is important. How do you maintain importation? By relationship and association. By keeping that association. And I'll teach on that as a good subject to be teaching on, which I'll be doing. 
import. The word import is metadidomai in the Greek. Metadidomai. Meta to be with, didomai to be part, I think, or import. So it is. It means to import, to be part of, then the importation comes metadidomai. I preached on it many years ago, like four years ago or so, metadidomai. Meaning the moment I leave that relationship, it will still be there. But now, unless God gave me my own anointing, that anointing is going to begin to fade away and fade out. It's the difference between the anointing and an anointing. The anointing and an anointing. So it's a blessing. The backdrop color is very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I heard an audible voice. Peter, come here. I saw men standing on the front porch. I got up immediately. Wow. Will you bring, will you bring doing any courses on numbers soon? Yeah, it's a tough one. Not, not, I'm, I'll maybe include it into angelology a little bit. A little bit. Very professional broadcast quality studio and mic. Amen. And, and there's another side, obviously, this side, which we put on this side. Uh, I'm not very photogenic on this side, but it's a nice view. And um, hmm? I'm sure I saw him having a, yeah, as of a side shot. Exactly like this, almost. I promise you, I'm going to message him because he didn't know we had and we didn't know he had. And he has, he has this side shot and he has this shot with this colors. Can you please help us understand if it lies spoken about Prophet Lovi? Huh? Prophet, can you please help us understand if it's lies spoken about? Why would Prophet Lovi speak lies? Oh, if it's lies spoken about Prophet, I don't know what is about spoken about him. You know, I love Prophet Levi. So what I did is I have a lot of people saying I'm a false prophet. So I went onto YouTube. I'm going to uh, tell him this. Here. I went onto YouTube and I said, Prophet Levi, false prophet, because I just wanted to see that other prophets are also getting the persecution. And I didn't see any false videos on him. <laughs> <laughs> like like nothing, nothing and I'm like what secret does he have that I doesn't that I don't have and I was going to ask him so I don't know what lies of it. obviously look look they will make these videos this one is a false prophet this that that oh, yeah, they prophet Lovi that's what they're saying they're saying people are saying prophet Lovi is a warlock he's a warlock well I've been called every single name you can just google me please don't youtube me I've been called every single name under the sun. I've never met Prophet Lovi. We have spoken a little bit. I believe he has very strong office of the Prophet on his life. And I believe he's a great man. I believe he's very humble. And um, God has graced him to take the United States and beyond, but especially the United States. So in a great way. So um, as the, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Um, the side shot is so cool. Uh, a lot of people speak bad about prophets. Obviously, a prophet's blood, a prophet's inherited bloodshed. Prophet's inheritance is bloodshed. Okay, prophets are stoned. Their inheritance is to be stoned. Uh, what are people saying here? Um, a lot of people speak bad about, yeah, I'll leave this post on your page to watch on replay. Yes, we will. If I heard my daughter call me, so real, I woke up, everything. People are saying, Pavlo is, oh, oh, that's what, no, no. That's just nonsense. That's people that have nothing to do. And usually jealousy is the, is the root of all of that. We have people speaking about us every day, making videos, writing articles. And you know what? If they are so obsessed about my life, God bless them. If I'm in their heads every second, God bless them. I'm living there rent-free. I don't know if I want to live there rent-free, but uh, you know, I can have some better heads to live in rent-free. But, uh, you know, people are saying, Prophet Lovi. okay, so thank you so much, Prophet Don. Appreciate it. There's plenty on Prophet Lovi, but he's legit. I didn't see anything. I was like, man, I'm jealous. 
And I did that not because I think it's false, because I was doing it because when you type my name, you just get so many false things. So I was hoping, I was looking for other prophets and there's not many other prophets. And I know him and maybe a handful of others. And I was like, let me see how many attacks on them that they're getting. And I didn't see him getting that attacks on. That's what came. So my, my YouTube was very positive with me regarding him. Uh, so people will say prophets teach things, even with me, even with this, what things I mentioned tonight will be taken with sound bites and all this stuff because people don't understand prophets. Prophets get real raw revelation from God. They are not there to teach it per se, yet they are there to announce it and then it is to be taught. So people would take prophets out of context and also when people are not called to those prophets or they are not given to those prophets, they do not understand those prophets. So you will never understand a minister who you are not given to. Sons are given. Okay. A child is born, but a son is given. So when you are a son, you are a gift to your father. And we have too many children in the church. But you know, you're coming to Toronto, Canada. Hmm. Actually, guys, I'm not, I don't travel that much. I hate traveling unless God is going to force me to do it. But for the right people in the right places, I will travel. For the right people in the right places, I'll travel. I heard somebody saying, Prof. Leon, can you come to Toronto? Oh. <laughs> if there's a great church that is, that is, that is, uh, that is, uh, that is, um, Inviting me when I say great churches, what I mean by that is that somebody that is a good relationship, that is strong of the Lord, and so I will consider it, obviously. Amen. Amen. So jealousy is another thing I have to admit. Do prophets suffer the most? Will you still be doing prophetic a prophet conference? Can we sign up? Yes, we are going to do a prophet's mantle conference. I just don't know the date. I don't know if I was still working on it, but we are definitely going to do a prof prophetic conference. A prophet's mantle online conference, and you can sign up for it. We also going to uh, maybe they're speaking about the prophetic institute uh, type, the prophetic retreat. Yes, we're going to do that also. So we'll get to that. Um, um, can the prophet be considered a spiritual leader to some through online prophet identify learning and growing under you? Thank you so much. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to go. Uh, why do prophetic words not come to pass? Prophetic words don't have to come to pass in your lifetime. It is also up to you and not the prophet or God. Okay. The retreat will be online, guys. We decided this year. We've always, never, we've always made it in person, but I thought to make it online this time because... Yeah, I thought to make it online. Because it's going to be very powerful, very different, very powerful. And then there's going to be one night of physical attendance for importation, obviously those who can make it, that are close by, but that night will also be online for physical, for, for importation. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Oh no, I have to pray for, I have to pray for people. Yeah. I have to pray for them. I don't have people, you're not reminding me, people are not reminding me because now they're going to say, I just want money and I don't want to pray for people, all these people. I want to pray for those who have given. I want to pray for those who are trusting God for healing. I want to pray for those who are trusting God for um, breakthrough. Anything you might need right now. What I mean is praying for those who have given, those who have given. Let them receive a prophet's reward, whatever they've given for, even if they're not online anymore. May God bless them. May God rejuvenate them. Let me pray for those. I want you to stretch out your hands for me wherever you are right now. And I'm going to pray that these sensations, these feelings of the Spirit will be activated in your life, will be increased in your life, will be imparted. Whatever prophetic anointing there is needed will be imparted. That Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the anointing May the fire of the Holy Ghost, may there be a prophetic impartation to them right now. Those who need healing in any body part, may healing 
begin to take place now. We command miracles to take place. Every fiber of their being, every cell beginning to come into shape, into form. Every problem in the limbs, every problem with cancer, every, every terminal disease, every sickness that is there to shorten their life, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we command it to loose them and we command them to be healed. Those that are here that are saying, I want to receive importation of these five feelings of the Spirit. These five feelings, the feeling of being smitten, the feeling of grief, the feeling of quenching, the feeling of warmth, the feeling of goodness and sweetness. Let them become sensitive to the Holy Ghost, to the feelings and the sensations of your spirit. Father, I pray for impartation, a prophetic impartation upon their lives. May the prophetic prophet's reward and the prophetic anointing rest upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, those who are stretching out their hands, may there be a prophet's touch upon their lives. Touch their lives, change situations. May there be financial breakthrough upon them. I speak against every calamity of financial breakthrough. Every disaster, every calamity of financial of financial destruction, every disaster, financial disaster, every calamity, every storm that has hit their lives. I pray for prosperity. I pray for breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. Those whose destinies have been stolen, those whose destinies have been affected, we break its power in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for liberty. I command people to be taken out of a prison, out of a cage. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Love you. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then Monday at the business convention. God bless you.